So one thing you'll notice as a software engineer is sometimes people do some pretty weird stuff when they are migrating over from different technologies or they're running to incrementally migrate. And what I'm about to show you is a tad weird and may fit under that boat just a little bit. So what I'm about to show you is how I mixed or how I might go about doing something like this where I mix Gatsby and create React app together um, on a single website and using them on the same domain. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I started with create React app for Saffron, this website, and I didn't care about SEO at the time. But now I'm kind of at the point where part of the website cares about SEO. And if you're not aware, create React app is terrible for SEO. But for example, things like the landing page and the contact card or feedback or about page and kind of just some random stuff that pops up in the website are totally static. And I'd like to use Gatsby to generate some of those pages. Now, I also am kind of interested in setting up a blog for this particular website and getting some SEO traffic that way as well. And so I'd like to use Gatsby as a blog engine as well. Now, before I actually jump into straight Gatsby, what I am doing currently to improve SEO is using React Snap. And so what this does is it pre-renders the landing page and really any page that I want to be static. Because what's going on with this website is the landing page needs to be static, but everything after that, the actual app when you log in, this doesn't need to be static at all. This is fine to stay create React app and that sort of thing. And React Snap has been working well and is what I would suggest you start with if you're looking to do something like this and for example, pre-render just a few pages or your landing page. The only reason I'm considering Gatsby at this point is because I want to start using some of the Gatsby plugins for the actual blog portion or some written articles for Saffron. Now one of the most popular methods that I've seen to do something like what I want where you're using two frameworks, one for a landing page or marketing copy and then a different framework for the actual login or different page is just slap it on two different domains and that's exactly what Netlify does. So if we look at up here in the URL, it says www.netlify.com. But as soon as I go to sign up or log in, look at the URL up here, we have now switched to app.netlify.com. So it actually has two different domains or it's using two different subdomains, one for the app portion, which does not need to be SEO specific, and the other one where they put their marketing copy on the www. Now I considered this approach, but there was two things I didn't like about it. The first was I'd have to redirect all the current links over to whatever subdomain that I picked because there's already people that are linking to stuff. And secondly, I just thought the URL would get really ugly. Uh, just particularly with what my domain is, mysaffronapp.com, we already have app in the name. I thought it'd look really ugly if I have app in front and I couldn't think of like a nice clean subdomain in the front. So I just figured it would get a lot uglier if I tried doing a subdomain. So instead, I just want a nice clean URL in here and get both of those to work. So the really the thing that I want is same domain and just toggle between the two frameworks without you even realizing it. I've never tried doing something like this before. So what I decided to do was set up a little proof of concept, a little example to see if I could get a small app working with this method. So what I did here is I merged the Gatsby default starter with the create react app starter. And I'm going to show you the final product or the working website. And then I'm going to dig a little bit into how the code works to get this working. Cause surprisingly, this is actually quite easy to set up. So here's the Gatsby portion of the site and you can notice the domain that I'm on here and I can go to another Gatsby page. So this is just another Gatsby page that I have linked to. It's the second page. You can notice the URL changes up here. We're still on the same domain. Right. But I also set up a link here that goes to the create react app portion and we can click this and notice we're still in the same domain. We're just on a different path and you may recognize this. This is just the home page for the create react app starter. And so I transitioned to the create react app portion of the site without you even really realizing it. Right. I just clicked on a link, which is quite normal. And this is another portion of the site that I can click to. This is just another route on the uh, create react app site. So I made sure it worked with react router because that's what I'm using with Saffron. So we're currently in the React router portion and I can just toggle between these two pages if I want to. 
or I can click on a link. This is a link that's going to take us back to the Gatsby portion of the site. So I can just easily kind of toggle between the two versions of the site and just click on different links to go back and forth. Okay, so now let's dig into the code that actually gets this to work. So what I have here is just the index page of the Gatsby site, and this is just to show you how the links were working. So I was using a Gatsby link here to actually transition to different Gatsby portions of the site, and then I was just using a regular anchor tag to transition to the Create React app parts of the website. And you can notice here, just a regular href there to transition over to that. And then here's the Create React app portion. So you can notice here I'm using React Router DOM, and we're rendering a browser router, and then I just have two routes, cool stuff, and I'm rendering some divs and stuff, and now you can see I have a link to go to the other React route, and uh, if we come down here, you can see this is the boring stuff route, and I can again transition to the other parts of the Create React app using the links, and then whenever I wanna go back to the Gatsby portion of the site, I just use a regular uh, anchor tag here with an href, and that takes me back to the Gatsby portion. So now the part that's really different, because you'll notice here there's nothing special going on with the actual code, is really just what happens when I actually deploy these together. So this is a deploy script that I created. It's a little bash script. And so what I do is I'm just going to walk you through what's going on here. So the first thing that happens is the script CDs into the Gatsby folder and then just builds the Gatsby site. So when it builds it, it's taking the React code and it generates static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you can see this if we go into the Gatsby folder, the output of that command is going to be a folder called public. And it's going to have some HTML in there, and it's also going to have some JavaScript and maybe some CSS mixed in there. And after that, we CD into the Create React app folder, and then we run build on that project. And again, that's going to create or take the React code, and it's going to spit out static files. And it creates a folder called build here. And inside that, we can see there's CSS, there's JavaScript, and there's also some HTML. Now, the idea is, if we are normally deploying these things separately, we just take the two build and public folders and deploy them separately. But because we want to combine them, the next step is to put them into the same folder. So here, I'm just removing this folder if it already exists. We can comment this out if we're running it the first time. And what I do here is I just take this build folder, and I move it into the public folder of the Gatsby site. And so the other thing I do is I rename it. Instead of calling it build, I call it CRA. So just for create React app. So if I click on the CRA folder inside of public, we'll see it has the built code from the create React app project. Now after that, the only thing that's happening is I am copying a redirects file into the public folder. This is the other part that gets it to work. So this is a special file that is only really used when you're deploying to Netlify. And that happens to be where I'm deploying. And what this does is allows you to redirect stuff. So in this case, what's going to happen is any file that does not match a actual file, AKA any of the index files that are created by a Gatsby over here. So index.html, 404.html, and I don't know what other pages I have. It looks like I have page two, right? So if it doesn't match any of the actual HTML that exists in Gatsby, what it's going to do is it's going to redirect you to the Create React app portion of the site. And it does that by just redirecting you to the CRA slash index.html file. And then here I'm just specifying it should be 200 when it does the redirect, like it should be the status code. And then the star here just says all routes should map to this file because I'm doing client-side routing in the Create React app portion. So again, any route that I create in Gatsby will go to Gatsby, but anything that is not an HTML file in Gatsby will be mapped to the Create React app. And the last thing you have to do to get this working is Create React app does not expect it to be prefixed like this in a folder. So I prefix it with CRA, which is just an arbitrary word that I picked. So to let Create React app know that I'm prefixing like this, in the package.json file for the Create React app project, if you add a home page to it, and then it doesn't matter what you put right here for the uh, domain, I just have example.com. But if you specify the route that it's going to sit under, and this is the route for my case, um, then it makes it all relative to this path and everything will work. So that is all there is to it. The basic technique is to put all the static HTML and JavaScript files in the same place, deploy that, and then set up some redirects to make sure when you go to a specific route, 
It's picking the framework or the HTML that you actually want. And then of course, if you need to, you may need to do some things in your framework to make sure it's pointing at the right path like this. And all the code for this is on GitHub. So if you wanna check out anything that I have here, including the deploy script, that'll be up there and you can check it out. One last thing that I wanted to mention, for those of you that are familiar with Gatsby, you may be wondering why I didn't decide to migrate the entire project to Gatsby, because you can kind of combine static HTML stuff that are good for SEO, and then also have a dynamic app in there as well. And there's two reasons I decided, at least not at the beginning, to start with that. The first was Gatsby uses Reach Router, and I'm currently using React Router, so I didn't want to switch my whole routing system over, because that would be a lot of work. And you saw how easy it was for me to set up the redirects, so I wanted to start with that. Now, there may be a way to get React Router working Gatsby, and then maybe I should consider it more. But the other thing is, I also didn't want to go through trying to get it to work in Gatsby and then run into any kind of inconsistencies that are different between it and Create React App. I just wanted to kind of get something working easily, and uh, that happened to be the easiest case, seems to be just redirecting. But anyway, I'm curious what you guys think of this technique, if you think it's overkill, or if you've tried something similar like this and you've actually worked out for you, I'm curious to know.